Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern, and today's Thursday, May 28th, 2020. Today's poem is by an English author and poet, uh, Edith Nesbitt, also known as E. Nesbitt. She wrote uh, quite a bit of children's literature, more than 60 books, and is probably most famous for books like The Railway Children, The Story of the Treasure Seekers, and Five Children in It. But she was also a poet. And the poem that I'm going to read today is, uh, is in keeping with uh, the, the Garden Week here on The Daily Poem. It's called The Despot, and I'm getting it from the Folio Book of Children's Poetry, which I have mentioned before on this podcast. It goes like this. The garden mold was damp and chill. Winter had had his brutal will since over all the years content his devastating legions went. Then spring's bright banners came. There woke millions of little growing folk who thrilled to know the winter done, gave thanks, and strove towards the sun. Not so the elect, reserved and slow to trust a stranger's son, and grow, they hesitated, cowered and hid, waiting to see what others did. Yet even they, a little, grew, put out prim leaves to day and do, and lifted level formal heads in their appointed garden beds. The gardener came. He coldly loved the flowers that lived as he approved, that duly, decorously grew as he the despot meant them to. He saw the wildlings flower more brave and bright than any cultured slave, yet since he had not set them there, he hated them for being fair. So he uprooted, one by one, the free things that had loved the sun, the happy, eager, fruitful seeds that had not known that they were weeds. This poem reminds me of a, of a comment that Wendell Berry once made about how beautiful, how wonderful dandelions are and how in order to keep our lawn looking beautiful and, uh, you know, up to par in our neighborhoods, we like to get rid of dandelions. But children, of course, find dandelions just delightful. Uh, even though they pick them, of course, they find them, they take great delight in picking them in, in every little bit of the stem and every little um, element of the, 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 the flower petal that they, they like to blow off into the, into the spring air. And of course, there's a long line of, of poetry about gardens that focus on the gardener. And many of them, of course, call to mind the idea of, of a deity being the gardener, the one who plants the garden, designs it, uh, trims it and prunes it and, and keeps it looking absolutely perfect. But this poem is not so much in keeping with that tradition, such as uh, the, the Marvell poem that I read on, on Tuesday. This poem uh, judges the gardener for not seeing beautiful things for what they are, for believing that beauty itself is uh, the way he believes things should be. The beauty is tied to his own perspective. That the gardener destroys beautiful things by needing to control uh, the garden itself, thus suggesting that there's beauty in, in the wildness of the garden. So it's interesting that in the first two stanzas, the poem has this sort of war motif going on. The garden uh, mold was damp and chill because winter brings his legions of troops across it. He destroys the, the ground that it comes across. It tramples things and, and brings destruction. But then spring unfurls its banners and fights back. Millions of little growing folk who are thrilled that the winter is gone, like the people in Narnia when the White Witch is cast out. And they strive towards the sun. So we have this, at the beginning, we have this, this image of destruction. And then that's mirrored at the end by the image of the gardener bringing destruction. And so the winter and the gardener sort of are brought together there. And I find that, that, that image very, um, very intriguing and very interesting and, and worth thinking about, even in a, in a poem that is ostensibly at least um, based on its inclusion in this children's collection and written by a children's author, or at least an author who is known as a children's book author. Even in such a context, this poem offers such a great deal to think about. Um, and what seems like a simple poem on the surface, you know, uh, is, is, uh, is worth uh, spending some time with, as I like to say. 
So once again, here is E. Nesbitt's The Despot here on Garden Week on The Daily Poem. The garden mold was damp and chill. Winter had had his brutal will since over all the years content his devastating legions went. Then spring's bright banners came. There woke millions of little growing folk who thrilled to know the winter done, gave thanks and strove towards the sun. Not so the elect, reserved and slow to trust a stranger sun and grow. They hesitated, cowered, and hid waiting to see what others did. Yet even they a little grew, put out prim leaves to day and dew, and lifted level formal heads in their appointed garden beds. The gardener came. He coldly loved the flowers that lived as he approved, that duly, decorously grew as he the despot meant them to. He saw the wildlings flower more brave and bright than any cultured slave, yet since he had not set them there, he hated them for being fair. So he uprooted, one by one, the free things that had loved the sun, the happy, eager, fruitful seeds that had not known that they were weeds. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll be back tomorrow with another poem for you.